So this guide is going to be going over weaponsmithing. Walking into the expansion, my goal was to focus on one particular weapon and make the highest item level in that space. Also for subscribers, by the way, if you want to go ahead and send me your personal orders on the crafting order station, send them my way and I'll make you some gear. No tips or commission necessary. Just send them my way. This is my in-game name and server. Just make sure you include all ingredients or if you also send a really good joke in the notes line with it, maybe I'll provide the materials for you. All right, let's get into it. So starting at a basic level, when you're leveling up blacksmithing, you're going to be trying to hit about the level 50 mark to really start getting into the end game crafts. Everything before that is just kind of clicking on the button that gives you the most points. Notice some of these, when you craft them, you're going to get three skill ups for just crafting one item. I try to target these most of the time. Bang for your buck, I feel like it gives you the most skill ups for the resources used. The level up system hasn't really changed that much for professions, so I'm not going to focus too much on doing that. I'm sure there's great resources out there where they can tell you exactly the amount of items and what you need to, to make to reach level 50. What I want to focus on is the stuff that's new with Dragonflight and also the stuff that I feel like is a little bit confusing for their new system. So like I said, if you've reached level 50, and you're starting to look at your knowledge points, where to put them, and you don't know really where to start, this guide is for you. We could really break down our blacksmithing journey in two phases. First, it's the pre-50 and then post-50. Post-50 is where we run into the first fork in the road. The fork in the road determines what we're going to specialize or focus on for the remainder of our blacksmithing journey. Specialization is where it's at when it comes to trying to make items that have the highest item level. Some recipes are going to be exclusive to those who specialize in that certain type of armor or weapon. Let's take a look at the specialization tree so I can show you what I mean. First, if you haven't done anything in any of these trees, they're all going to be locked. All right, in effort to make this a little bit more clear, I'm going to show you a leveling path that's pretty effective for weaponsmithing. Once you gain your first knowledge and you're able to select your first path, go ahead and click Learn Specialization on Weaponsmithing. Then, at this point, you're able to start applying points. I want to level up, I want to level up the original node until I can pick a sub-specialization. So, I'm going to put one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At this point, after I've put 10 points into the, into the original node, I'm able to pick a sub-specialization. The reason why this is important is that we're just trying to gain the recipes as quick as we can. Crafting these recipes is going to give us more knowledge in the long run. So to accelerate this, we want to gain access to all of the plans that are available at the end of the tree. Next, you're going to head on down to Hafted. Or you can head down to Blades. You're going to end up getting both of these. You can make your choice here. Which one do you want to make first? I'm going to learn, I'm going to learn hafted for my example. Now that I've learned this specialization, I want to take a look at the rewards. Plus 10 inspiration, learn a sub specialization of your choice. Now, again, that's my goal. Ultimately grabbing these nodes and not putting points into them, but just just unlocking them is going to give me the plans for each of the weapons. And again, that's our goal. So I'm going to put 10 points into this hafted specialization. Next, I get to unlock another subspecialization, or I get to unlock my first subspecialization at the end of the tree. I like to start with hammers because this might get me an upgrade when I make my blacksmithing hammer. So I'm going to learn maces and hammers. Again, no points are necessary in this to gain the benefit of getting the plans. All right, next, I'm going to go back to this tree here. I'm going to level up another. I want to level up another 10 points because I want to get the final sub specialization. Now that I learned, now I can learn axes, picks, and pole arms. And take a look here. I know how to craft a primal molten great axe and I know how to craft a primal molten mace. Now we have gone to the end of the tree and obtained all of the recipes that we want to obtain. I'm going to return back to the original node. I want to get this up to learn my final sub specialization. And now I'm at 20. 
notice blades has now been unlocked or it has the ability to be unlocked. Now, again, this is identical to what we did on the hafted side. We want to ultimately get up to the blades final sub specialization. So we're going to level up until we unlock the ability to choose a sub specialization, which is first going to happen at rank 10. Now that we're at 10, we're going to pick either short blades or long blades. Next, we're going to return back to the original stem, and then we're going to keep applying knowledge. We're going to keep applying knowledge until we unlock the next specialization. We're now at 20 points, and we have unlocked the ability to get long blades. All right, very nice. So we have now gotten all of the recipes unlocked for our weapon smithing focus. We're going to be able to unlock more knowledge by crafting all the recipes available. Again, in case you don't know, the first time you craft a recipe, you gain, you gain knowledge and artisan metal. This is going to help you unlock even more in your tree. I do want to note that at some point in your journey here on this first tree, you're going to get the option to unlock a sub specialization. You can make your decision on this. I learned hammer control as my next specialization. The reason for that was that I liked the bonus to skill when crafting blacksmithing goods. This is going to apply to every recipe that I create. Next, my goal for this, I didn't go deep into this tree. I just wanted to get down here to where I get the bonus for inspiration. And here it is, 10 points in. This was my ultimate goal in this tree. I wanted to get the additional skill granted when inspired because that stacks nicely with the black dragon touched hammer and also the finishing reagent, Draconic Fluid. This is gonna give a lot of skill bonus at the point that I get inspired. So to get to that specialization, first I have to put enough points down to be able to unlock my first specialization. I have to get to 10 points to unlock my first sub specialization. I picked Poignant Plans. And then I wanted to get up to this node here where I could put 10 points in. So we have a total of 80 points invested so far. Now, this is where you can come up with your own strategy on exactly what you want to focus on. I decided that I wanted to focus on making better hammers. So I started putting my points to focus in maces and hammers. Jumping back to my characters tree, I went down and focused on finding, focused on maces and hammers. From here, you can make your own decisions on exactly where you want to go. But what I highly suggest is try to focus on one particular item. Have a specialty. The higher your specialty, the higher item level your items are going to be, and then you're more likely to sell items through the crafting orders. To further elaborate on that, I wanted to show you the difference between an item that I am specced for versus an item that I'm not. Again, take a look at my tree. I mentioned before that I'm focusing on maces and hammers. I may widen my focus after I max this tree out though. To be honest with you, this is a bit of a mistake. <laughs> Unfortunately, I applied points over here before I fully decided what my strategy was gonna be. Learn from my mistakes and just focus on one specialization. So take a look at this. First, I learned how to craft my primal molten mace. This is gonna be available to pretty much anyone that used the strategy I defined earlier. Next. Plus five skill when crafting maces and hammers. This is gonna increase our skill number when we're about to craft. And remember, I've mentioned this before, skill is the ultimate driver of quality. So this skill is what you're chasing after. And getting plus five is very nice. Next here, I think everyone's gonna be chasing after the black dragon touched hammer. And if you're not sure how to get this, I have a guide on how to do that. Check the top of the video for the link. And also both videos I've mentioned are, are linked in the description below as well. Anyway, back on track. I don't think this is an amazing unlock. It's okay. But again, I just want to be able to make as high a quality of a blacksmith hammer as I can. And for me, since I can only craft it for myself, I'm going to keep recrafting my black dragon touched hammer. Now next, our next unlock is plus 10 when crafting maces and hammers. Again, another plus 10 skill points. This is very nice. Another plus five. My next unlock is gonna be very valuable here. It says learn to craft using the illustrious insight finishing reagent to improve skill when crafting maces and hammers. Now, I go over this in another video, but I'll go ahead and summarize it here. Illustrious insight is gonna add 30 skill 
If you want to hear about this more in depth, it's linked in the description and also at the top of the video. The Illustrious Insight is going to be an item we can buy from the auction house because it's created by alchemists. You can put one of these on there to get a 30 skill bonus added to your craft. That's pretty nice and definitely can help you reach your quality breakpoints. Finally, we're going to head on down to the bottom here where it's learn how to craft using the master's hammer in order to freely repair maces and hammers. This one's fine, but it doesn't really go into my strategy of just trying to get as much skill as possible. So now, what does that look like? What does specialization look like versus a being average at a craft? I'm gonna show you the difference between if I crafted a short blade and if I crafted a one-handed mace. If I go over to my recipes and then I scroll on down, here is, okay, here's my short blade. If I scroll over, I have an expected item level of 385. And you can see down here that my expected quality is to be silver. Silver is my starting point. Now I can inspire and add some points, but as a base craft, if I was not inspired, then I would get just a silver quality. So if you take a look over here, a silver quality is gonna boost it by two item levels. So that would come out to be 384. That matches our tooltip up here, what we can see. Now let's take a look at that Primal Molten Mace. Again, this is what I'm focused on. So I'm guaranteed a quality of gold. That's gonna be four item levels over my short blade. Let's take a look here. We can see in the tooltip here, 3D6 is the item level as a base. Take a look over here though, you can see that I am well into the gold, so my specialization is gonna get me closer to the diamond level. Diamond level is gonna give us seven item levels above the regular craft or the bronze level craft. So you can start to see where the closer I am to the diamond level, I may not get this if I craft, but if I get inspired, I definitely will. Also, you can see we're adding 30. Once I unlock this, adding 30 skill to my craft is gonna make it way more likely that I'm gonna be able to hit this break point. If you're curious about the other optional reagents and the fi finishing reagent, again, I went over this in another guide and I'll link that video in the description and also above in the card. If this video is helpful to you, heroic strike that like button. And if you wanna stay up to date with WoW content in the future, slam the subscribe for more WoW content. Thanks for joining me today and see you next time.